Good evening! Holy crap, that was a near miss. Uh, okay, so... There might be some size issues and shit like that going on. I'm hoping the sound video is going to be alright. Basically, just before I was about to hit uh, go for the pre-stream. Audio and video, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, just before I was about to hit start, I loaded, <laughs> loaded up OBS and the camera decided no. So um, I've just been resetting up uh, some things here. Now, dare I go... I, I know that this is like has autofocus on. So, like in the old days of yore, we're going to start seeing me go in and out of focus. Um, like that. And uh, white balance and all that crap. So, I'm tempted to go in and try and change the settings. But I know this is a little hairy. So, I might just leave it like this for now. Am I bigger than I usually am? And I'm not saying, this, do I look fat in this window? But, I mean, like, is this wider? <laughs> is this more real estate than I normally give myself? Because, yeah... We got a lot of a uh, lot of code to look at today. What's going on? So let's say hello to some folks as well. Good evening to Borodust and Darius, Decaf, Smurf, Infinisil, Keygon, Memory Haram, Median, Pom de Pimp, uh, Cisco Jose. A special good hello to you and Tom Dum Three and Bots. Welcome all. Let us get this show somewhat on the track slash road slash. Help! I need coffee. Right. Okay, so... What the hell am I doing? Okay. I really want to look at nuclear today. And uh, so it's really good that Borrow Dust is around. And... Um, yes, we're going to get a little bit of UI going in our project. So let's just... I've got nothing ready. <laughs> so let's get Play With Verts up. Um, Uh, Mary Haram has linked a road to Common Lisp by uh, Steve Losh. That dude is awesome in general, and that uh, that blog post is fantastic as well. It's a big old uh, yeah. Actually, I should just bring it up. Wait a second. Ah, where am I? Okay, let's put a window there and bring this up here and go to Reddit comma slash r slash Lisp and chug 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 and where was it? Here it is. Yeah. Just covers a whole bunch of stuff. Introductions and going through ideas in the language and stuff like this. I haven't actually read all of it yet, but what I've seen has been really cool. Um, and then just recommending things as well. It's a... Yeah. It's ace. Ah, oh, right. But normally stuff that stuff ah the stuff that Steve does is awesome. Man, relax. Check the white balance. Let's see what's going on. Um Hey Jace, good to see you, man. Yes, so we are working on UI today, so let's thank you. Thank you for getting me back on track, seeing as I don't know what's going on. Um, in package play with verts. And let's just start something off and see if it runs or if it's going to explode. Jason's saying the Discord has seen a huge surge in joins in the past few days. Wow, that's really cool. There's, there's just some small hurdles for people to get into some of this stuff sometimes. Um... That was reminding me of a few other things as well. But first thing I want to do is reset FBOs. Cool. So. Here's our scene from last time. Nice normal mapped things. Cool scene. Yada yada. We got that loading. Anyway. We wanted some UI widgets because we want to start interacting with stuff. And me just typing positions and stuff and rotations into, <laughs> into the text editor. Uh, could be pretty sucky. So it'd be nice to have some widgets where we can drag things around. That'd be really nice. So let's get on that. Um, to do that, we were looking at the nuclear library, um, the bodge, um, specifically bodge nuclear, which is a wrapper around uh, the C nuclear library. And it has this excellent example here, which I think is what we're going to be taking apart today. Um, we're just going to try and uh, bodge it, horror, horror, into working with uh, Kappa, which shouldn't be too hard because so much of the stuff here has been done really well. So, let's uh, go back to our project, which is back in code, lisp, play with verts, 
Um, I haven't even kicked off into a new branch yet. So what's this stuff? Oh, we haven't done anything with that yet. Actually, that's a great place for us to start. And this as well. Cool. Okay. Um, that's, so we'll start episode 53. Branch out to episode 54. Let's commit these. Yeah, stage them all. And a UI file. And that's where we're going to dump a bunch of the um, bodge related code. Let's push this somewhere. So push this up to origin. Hopefully not too much my keyboard's in view. One of those days. Right, let's uh let's risk it as oh what's going on over here? Keygon is saying I'm at episode ten of pushing pixels. Am I gonna understand anything? I don't understand anything, so you're just much chance as me. Um all I'd say, Keygon, is if anything's uh if anything's weird, chat questions. I'm happy to go through anything as basic as you like. Um Let's uh, let's poke a couple of things over here. This might ah oh, now do I risk it? Yes, let's do it. Okay, going into the camera properties, going to configure video and tell it not to auto white balance or auto focus and exposure. Right, so I'm going to be a bit red for now, but that'll do. Just so it's not zooming in and out all the time. Um... <laughs> oh, burn, Bomberman. Feel free to shoot some questions. If any, he will answer within 30 minutes <laughs> if you put a notification in the message. Oh, God. Yes, it's too true. Too true. Um, so, yes. Where are we? We've got that UI file. And we have the example uh, from Bodge. And we're going to try and port this over. So... If we look down the bottom, we have um, Klutz, which we saw last time was kind of a simple, kind of like Glut, a simple thing to get a window and um, events being processed and things like this. So we don't need to replicate that because we've already got a window and everything set up. Um, and in our project, if we go to our ASD file, we're already pulling in a library called Skitter. Um, specifically, this is the Keppel plumbing uh, for Skitter using SDL as the source of input events. Um, so we already have that, so we don't need to worry about this bit. And then there's this, which is a Klutz render, which is the thing that gets called every frame. And there is some kind of context object that's passed in. So we should probably have one of those. There, pass. Um, UI. So let's just let's just make that and make a variable. One of those. So now we've got an object um, of this type, and we can modify this and add fields and stuff to it as we need. Um, we're probably going to need a function for um, initializing the UI. Probably actually will move creation of this into this function very soon, but it's there for now as a stub. And then um, we're going to have the frame equivalent to render, which is just going to be step. It's the stuff we're going to do each frame. So let's have a look what we have to do. So here there seems to be some stuff with setting the clear color. Now I'm going to see if we can get away without setting the clear color because we're clearing to draw this scene and I'd quite like our um, UI elements to be on top of this. Um, so let's see if we can get away without that. Um, those who are knowledgeable in OBS, do you could you recommend to me the settings to, um, to bring up the brightness here? This is way darker um, in OBS than um, it is on my screen. Uh, coming through, I'm, I'm using a... a uh, capture device called the HD Rocket. Uh, I don't think it's that that's making it that much darker. I think it's OBS. Um, but I, I know it's a known problem, but I've had difficulty when I've just skimmed over the resources finding actually what I need to change 
to, to make that right. So if any of you guys know how to do that, I'd really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Hey, Barrett, good to see you, man. We're just getting started. Okay, so we're not going to worry about this bit yet. So now we get to look at register input. Um, okay, so this is where things start getting interesting. So let's have a similar function. Register input. And this is where we start looking at some, there's something in the app, um, which is our UI class. Um, if we go to its definition up the top, we can see the nuclear app has an NK context, a renderer, a pixel ratio, stuff like this. So we're going to want this too. Um, yeah. Let's just duplicate this. But with a few tweaks. Um, for now, I'm actually going to have the background color be... Um, Yeah, just a, um, a VEC4 rather than uh, foreign memory. Let me just enable concurrent hints. Um, compression. We're not using claw, we're using um, CFFI directly. Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting one. Anyway, let's just, we can just allocate foreign alloc uh, one float. So we're going to have a pointer to one float. Um, don't know what level is yet. I, we, I think we looked a little at this last week, but I can't remember. Uh, pixel ratio, NK ren renderer, NK context. That's good. Um, I just selected some stuff rather than compiling this whole form. And so I don't think we want to um, create this here anymore. We're going to want to create it here. I think we should say unless, and I am coming to the chat in a second, unless we've got already set up UI, then do this. Um, Median says, did you try changing the color range in OBS un, uh, to full under settings advanced? Let's try it. Let's do it now. Do I do that on the, um, let's have a look. Tools, nope, file, settings. Here we go, settings. Advanced. Uh, color range. Oh, yes, I can see why UV color range is partial right now. But I can't obviously change it while the stream is running. So, um, do we do we stop, which is going to chop the video in half? Um, or do we just carry on like this and say, fuck it? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keegan's trying to speed me up. Twitch doesn't have 1.5 speed like YouTube. I'm going as fast as I can, man. I'm just co I'm confused at high speed. I'm just not getting things done at high speed. Right. So, um, let's just set off this back to nil for now. And we're going to handle making it here. So, let's look at where the NK renderer is set. Was I just there? I probably was. Set up NK renderer. Yeah, this is the init here. Okay. Um, so we're not worrying about background color so much. So we've got a few things going on here. They make a context, they make a renderer. That's fine. Um, and I'm assuming something has to be initialized before we do that. Otherwise, we could just do it from uh, DefVar. Yeah, especially the renderer. That's got to be GL related, surely. So, hmm. Yeah, let's let's definitely do that after Kepler set up our window. And then the rest of it is just setting up the RGBA values of this foreign um, color F, which is used for the background color. Um, we're not going to worry about that right now because we're using this vec4. Um, so we'll come back to that later. What is interesting though is it's... Um, hmm. It might be a problem. We'll get back to this. It's fine. 
I will uh, copy these values just so we can we can get the same color as they're using. Um, bring that back. Bring it back here, and get rid of those. Oh yeah, I should have done that while I had multicolored cursors up, but that's fine. And we can remove the F zeros for now because. Uh, Crate Vector is going to turn those into single floats anyway, and we're not that desperately worried about accuracy at this point. So, cool. Um, if it's a case of when it's made, I think we can just... When we um, init UI, we could just make it then. So we can just, let's do this. So let's say the init form, <laughs> whatever that was, Init form is make context. Um, make renderer is the init form there. Then when we call make instance, actually everything will just be set up uh, by the init forms here. So I don't think there's anything else we need to do per se. And then there is this uh, style set font thing. Let's uh, let's have a look at that. with slots and nk context, nk renderer, passing in UI, we set this. Of course, passing in UI. Ah. UI, there we go. We're getting there. Carry on, it's cool. Groovy, no pressure, excellent. Then we'll stay with slightly odd colors. Hopefully the UI is gonna show up pretty clearly against this crap anyway, so it won't be a problem. Um, okay, so this is the function that should initialize stuff if we're lucky. And um, then we've got some stuff to destroy things. We're not gonna worry about that yet. We'll just leak and crash horribly. And um, cause that's gonna be how, <laughs> how we're working for now is gonna be crash horribly. So, I wonder what happens then. Let's try it. Let's just uh, bring up the REPL down here. We're a little space constrained because normally I keep within, um, I keep uh, the line width to around 80. Actually, this is, see, this is why this feels tighter than normal because normally we fit um, a good number of characters in uh, one half of, what we're looking at in one, uh, what's it called? One buffer. Hmm. Ah, well, doesn't matter. Um, let's just call init UI and see what happens. And just make sure it's compiled and then run this and it's freaking out. Okay, the alien function nk init default is undefined. Huh. Wonder what it did. Now I was futzing around with um, with nuclear before I loaded this up, so maybe I broke something. Let's have a look at that again. NK init default is undefined. So this is in the call from init default. Huh, how interesting. Because this isn't in R code at this point. This is um, inside this block, which you're going to be seeing a lot. This is the macro that um, reads the specifications um, for this library, for this header file, essentially, um, and generates all the list bindings for it. So if we expand this, you can see there, well, there's not much code here. There is a C include that when we expand, uh, we can see all the things from that, um, from that header file now have bindings to them generated by um, claw. But something is not working. I don't know what it is. Um, did we... Let's just ha have a look at play with verts.asd. Did we edge bodge nuclear? Yes, we did. I wonder what happened. Now, like I say, I was fucking around with things just before the stream, so there's a chance that I messed something up. So let's... Um, did you load nuclear blob? 
Probably not. Probably not, sir. Thank you. Um, I bet we did that last time and not this time. Let's try that. And it's nuclear, not nuclear. Whoops. Cool. Quick load. Nuclear blob. Let's load that and try init UI again. And we have a memory fault. Bam. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so let's uh, let's kill this and give it a fresh chance because it's odds are I cocked something up. So let's get this back in and we'll see. Whoops. Oh, what? Did I not say that after that? No. There we go. Let's try that again. so funny how thrown off for such a chunk of time I can be just by the fact that for like 10 minutes things weren't working before the stream or 7 minutes or whatever it was relax it will be fine chug 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 but thanks Baradust that's uh Good to know. Actually, yeah, I should just look at the, um, seeing if we're looking at that example. Should look at the example ASD. Oh yeah, Botch Nuclear has one ASD. Here we go. Nuclear Blob, Botch Nuclear, and then Klutz, Claw, CFFI, and all that kind of stuff that we're not worrying too much about. Good. So hopefully, hopefully, we can say play, give it a second to chug while it loads up that model. That's another thing we're going to have to do soon is start loading the, uh, once we brought these mo these models in using Ascent, then we should export them again um, by just like writing the uh, data out to a file once we've got it in the format that we want it, and then loading is going to be way faster. Anyways, okay, so we're, we're at this point. And then we're going to call init FBOs and pray to the gods of demos. Not init FBOs. What am I talking about? Init UI. Ouch. Now, I wonder if it's that... Um, it's freaking out in make renderer. So let's have a look in here. Make NK renderer. Ah, so this is something that's in the C code. So let's go and have a look at that. CBV, I think that's just wrappers. So let's have a look at main C. I think the renderer is in here. Well, there it is. I wonder what I'm cocking up. Those are real values, max vertex buffer size and max element buffer size. Um, where are they populated anyway? Oh, it's just hard coded, okie dokie. Um, we've got a couple of shaders. And Calyx up. Uh, size of renderer, cool. Set some of the values in it defaults. Okay. Um, Gil create program. This should be fine. Wonder what it doesn't like. File shader, blah, 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 attach shader, link program. Well, this is, seems kosher. I mean, like we said, we, we ran the example on this machine the other day and it worked fine. So there's something else up. Um, I 
<laughs> Pixel Outlet says, don't forget to wrap your code with the uh, with email on error to borrow dust macro. <laughs> so this guy says, I'd pay extra for that feature. Yep. Well, it's better. Borrow dust just gets summoned. He arrives full of knowledge and to gaze upon my works, which are confused. Um, yeah, it's rather strange. There's nothing too exciting here that I would expect there to be significant problems. And it's definitely on my setup. Like we say, we, we ran the example, okay. So, let's go back to UI again. Like, wait a second, there's... Let's bring up the example. Okay, so, make instance of nuclear app with these things set up. When we looked at, oh, for goodness sake. When we looked at this, it's a Clux application. Um, these values are being passed down to the uh, base class, or setting up the slots in the base class, which are used for setting up GL, initializing things, stuff like that. So that should be fine. And really, we're just running this, equivalent of this anyway. And it's not like we need to have set up the color before we do any of this stuff. This stuff would work on its own. So, what have I done? NK context, NK renderer. And it was in make renderer that it was freaking out. I wonder why. Let's just bring up that error again just so we can see it. Unless it's still... Nope. Unhandled memory fault. Call into Lisp on what thing though? On what part? Oh, call into Lisp. Oh, that's uh, post signal tramp. So it's freaking out when... Hmm. Never mind them. Nope. Nothing to see there. We've already had a look at this. Hmm. What have I done wrong? There's so little to see so far. Right. Let's restart again. I'm going to just load the bodge example because I want to see it work because I know it did. Um... Bodge nuclear slash example. There we go. And then we go back to example and oops. Oh, don't even need to do that. Yes, there is. Yeah, works perfectly. So what am I screwing up? One would assume something could do with GL. Um, yes, like Barra just saying. Something with a context, I assume, but it should be okay. I'm confused too. Yeah, it's, uh, it's rather odd. Like, it's only a GL context. As long as you're on the right thread, it's there. Hmm, it's going to be an episode of me going hmm and tapping on things and staring intently at the screen. So, keep questions coming. Any distractions are welcome because uh, this could be, this could take a little while. Um, yeah, super interesting. Now, I'm mulling over whether to make a more cut down version of the project, but Play with verts really doesn't have that much stuff going on it that should be a problem. In it that should be a problem anyway. Um, so yeah, and everything everything's working here. We don't have to worry about any of this. So let's Oh yeah, blockings too. Fair enough. 
Okay, so to satisfy my curiosity again that it's definitely still working, and it's definitely me that screwed something up. So, um, let's play with verts. Load that up. Uh, rather initial than initializing everything, I'm just going to do Keppel REPL, which is just going to bring up a window. Let's shove it over there. And um, then we'll just try calling some bodge stuff directly and just see what happens. It's rather odd. Can't even use the works on my machine because it does work on my machine, but just not the thing I want. Oh, yeah, that's all right. I know what that is. Not relevant to this issue, unfortunately. So run Keppel REPL. We get a window over there. Um, then we are going to just step host once. Um, all this is doing is pumping the event queue one time, which means we'll get the resize events and stuff like this come in. So that should be set up correctly. Um, what else? Then we're going to look at example. And the first thing it does, like, let's go and... Hmm. I suppose we could follow the logic through to see what happens with uh, the GL context there. Oh, because it happens inside. Oh, wait a second, though. I've got a feeling it's going to work. Um, here, if I just... Oh, where's the UI again? If I just call this function right now, it works. That works before, though. It's this one that was a problem. I think this one will work, too. Oh, fuck. Okay. What I was hoping it would be is that um, because we had stuff rendering, maybe um, there was something in the GL state setup that was causing the issue. But we're not actually looping at all now. We're doing nothing. Um, and we're getting this issue. Ah, I really want to know what part we get to in that function. Um, let's have a look at my grant. Oh, yeah, there's really nothing to it. Fuck. Um, it's just, yep, yeah, it's happening before we get to here, so it's definitely not this guy, which would make sense, because all this is doing is making a struct, so it really shouldn't have been an issue there. Um, it ha is definitely in this guy, and then we're off, we're, uh. We're in C. So, maybe we can have a look at that C code and see if we can find which bit is fucking up. Well, can, we can just replicate it in um, the Lisp REPL. Let's have a look at lib and CBV, was it? No, CBV, I think, was just the, yeah, the, the wrappers around... Oh, yeah, call by value. That's what CBV is stood for. This is um, anything that needs to take a struct by value. Um, it allows you to pass it a pointer to it, and then it, yeah, dereferences it and passes that by value. Uh, this is just some of the nice stuff that Claw does to make sure that we can call things portably across all the different platforms we need, yada, yada. Anyway, not CBV, main. We're back here again. Oh man, this is all so innocent looking. Oh, this isn't stuff we can test from from Lisp either. Oh. oh, I really don't want to go through debugging this code right now. That is not something I'm going to be comfortable doing on the stream. So I would, would want to leave that for later. Because uh, we will need to get like a decent setup. Oh, wait a second. Bird is saying, oh, try loading bodge glad. And then glad in it. Maybe GL functions are messed up. 
That's worrying. I'm also very interested in Bodge Glad. So let's have a look. Let's, what is Bodge Glad? Read me. Glad wrapper for open GL 4.6 kilo. This tells me everything and nothing. Um, Bodge Glad. Boop. Glad generator. What the hell? Wait a second, have you got different bindings? Are you not, is this not CL Open GL based? Because that is kind of interesting. Um, that would be a kind of a shame if we'd moved away from that ASD. No, we're using CL OpenGL. Huh. Yep, I will definitely test it. Let's uh let's uh let's do that. Start from scratch. When you get these memory errors and, and stuff when you're doing the FFI thing, sometimes it's just it's just nicer to start fresh each time. Um even though it means reloading this stuff. Maybe GL functions are messed up. Lip glad. What the hell? Yep, I am... Must admit, mate, I'm confused. Oh, wait, here we go. It's OpenGL based. It's, sorry, it's, yeah, it's OpenGL based, but it's linked against Bodge Glad, so it might not receive required functions if you don't mangle GL functions. Let's see. Uh, okay, so it was QL, Bodge, Glad. And then it was Glad in it, did you say? Ah, oh, come on. Loading Glad failed. Fair enough. I assume there's um, a Glad blob as well. Or is that included here? No, of course that's. Uh, idiot. Let's have a look. Blob. Glad blob. Yep, we need that as well. Okay. Cure. Quick load. Glad blob. I still love having these. Um... Aww. Did not like... Seeing as we're going to need them anyway, let's add them to um, come now. Code list, play overts, play overts, ASD. Glad blob and glad. Oh, no, bodge glad. Play with votes. Let's see what happens. <laughs> with phone call to borrow dust. Yes. Yeah, it's weird, man. I must admit, I just still don't entirely understand what would what's um, missing from CL OpenGL that re that means that projects would require Glad in the first place. But that's not a, I guess, not a big priority right now. But I'd love to understand that because. I know there's some things that aren't in CL OpenGL, but of course we can add those to that project rather than having to have too many shims, one would hope. Okay, so if we look at glad in it now and we jump to the definition, it's definitely there. 
Um, let's uh, let's Keppel Repl first. Let's definitely get a context up and running, and let's run Glad in it. Then it was fine. Okay. So now the question is. We're glad in it be fine before we started that context. At least we know which way around it is. And the great Borodas has linked us um, to glad in the chat. So let's have a look at what this is. Multi language Vulcan, da 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 da, -da loader generator based on the official specs. I guess what I don't understand is, isn't this what some like isn't some of this covered by CL OpenGL already? Um, because we handle like obviously, I mean, it's already been working. Hmm. Including extensions. So. Not too sure. Oh yeah, someone mentioned Patreons with Patreon tip too. Yes. If like get to borrow dust if he has a Patreon. Give that man some money, because he's doing awesome things. Anyway. Right, let's run Glad in it again and see if it freaks out. It freaks out, because I guess we don't have a context yet. And then it's fine. Okay, so let's just add that to our <laughs> add that to our init process. Um, how does a uh, Let's just have a look at this, actually. Um, it doesn't look like something you want to double initialize. So let's... Um, let's have a little flag for that. Um, reset step bar um, flag nil. Oops, what am I doing? This, and then unless, glad, glad in it, and set glad, ah, to true. Groovy. And Fiona says, I forgot about the stream on the one week I'm on temporary leave. I mean, now I guess. Hey, man, don't worry. We uh, we haven't been able to get things working yet, anyway. So it's fine. We haven't even uh, we haven't even got started with the UI. Oh God, no! Forty-five minutes in. Okay, let's hope. Let's hope that was at least the fix we needed. Um, let's just call it init UI and see what happens. Oh, of course, I'm in the wrong package. If I wasn't in that, hey, okay. So borrow dust. Um, You were right about glad, at least. At least. That sounds so ungrateful. Sorry, man. You were definitely right about the glad thing. That That is that. Is that. Um, that is, as Borodas is saying again, this glad is only needed for a renderer, though. You can use nuclear without glad lib. Okay. Oh, okay, so maybe some of the stuff... Oh, right, so this loads in all of the GL stuff, so any C dependencies can use it correctly, probably. Um... And Fiona says you're watching the streams every night before bed. Dude, that'll give you brain damage. At least it's only 20 minutes at a time. The exposure man. Thank you. Thank you, your health. Right. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully you now um, we've got some UI. Like the, the system is at least loaded. Uh, let's just start off the renderings. Borodas says, exactly. So whatever, whatever my half-assed explanation was, that was sort of what we were going for. Anyway, cool. This is this is alive. Nice. Right. Actually, let's get down to a nice bright spot. Right by that lion. Whoop. It's bright enough. Gives us some contrast to work with. Okay, so... Now that's initialized, um, we're going to be calling step UI each time. We're going to be calling register input. And... 
can get back to the example, register input, there we go. So all we're doing here is we're taking the NK context and then we're pushing in info um, about where the cursor is and what's being pressed. When I did this before, you also pass in things like what the keyboard state is, but we won't worry about that today. We're just gonna try and replicate this example. So it's actually gonna be very similar. So um, fact, it might be exactly, it's not exactly the same, is it Chris? Let's do this. With UI, then we're gonna grab the NK context out of it. Um, we're gonna say begin um, with that, that's fine. And we've got an end at the end. Um, and then we've got cursor position from the app now. How do we do that with our stuff? We're using Skitter. Um, let's just look at camera because we've probably got that there. Um, so, mouse um, without any arguments gives us the default mouse, which is at index zero. So that gives us the mouse. Then we get um, mouse. Hopefully, there'll be a position. Mouse boss. There we go. As a vector two. Um, So that's good. It's exact, pretty much exactly the same as this. So our cursor can just be mouse pos of mouse. Uh, we're taking the floor of a ref into those things. It's a vector two, so that's going to work fine. That's all good. Right. Then we got input button. I'm going to drop this down to new lines just because, um, yeah, it's it's tricky to read. Actually, we can just do this. Where is it? Um, all right. So input button. Uh, we're passing in the input state for the left mouse button at the position that we just mentioned. Um, and okay, this is dependent on what the state of the mouse is. So let's look at mouse button um, for the mouse. Input zero is currently nil, and I guess if it was pressed down, let's try that. Let's press that down and press return. Oh no, then the event is like, of course, when I click here, I'm gonna be focusing on that window, so I can't really test this very easily, but we'll, we'll, we'll see if it works soon. Let's just do if this, then true or false. Now, I'm, these constants are actually just one and zero, so we could simplify this, but it's nice that we're using the correct um, NK true and false in case that got redefined at any point. So let's get rid of this. Um, hey, love like Samdex, good to see you, man. Uh, backers could really get a lot out of use out of aggressive indent mode. Possibly. <laughs> I like how the indenting out is. I mean, it's a bit broad, but. I will uh, actually. I'll have to look into that aggressive indent. Okay, I'll, I'll check that out at some point. I'm not sure when. <laughs> I'll find some time. Um, right. Okay. So that bit's going to be exactly the same. So we don't have to worry about that. Input motion is. I mean, it seems that we're just passing in the position rather than. Oh, I see. This is the. Um, this is the button event at this position and this is the current position. Okay. When I see motion, I was expecting a difference, but that's fine. And that's it. Okay. So this is going to be exactly the same. That's good. So register input is almost identical. Hooray. And let's go and look at the next thing, which is compose nuclear. This is actually where the, a lot of the rendering stuff seems to be done as well, at least where the, um, yeah, I guess the composition of this of the UI is done, which makes sense. So let's jump there. Um, I will make this full width for now because we've got a lot going on. And it seems like a lot of stuff, but it's actually not that bad. What we have here, and this is what we'll want to clean up. Um, like with, we'll want to abstract over this uh, once we've got something set up. So. Um, what we could actually do is we could just take this pretty much as is because our data structure is exactly the same um, apart from our background color stuff. So we can probably drop this. Yeah. 
yeah, let's... We'll just keep a couple of the fields. Okay. Right, let's take this roughly as is and get back to our example and dump it in here. Compose nuclear. So what's going on here is this is an immediate mode UI and we've just got a lot of C calls. This begin here is beginning a uh, frame, in this case a window. Um, you can see that we have a border and whether it's movable or not. And uh, these are, yeah, just a bunch of flags. So yes, we want a border. Yes, we want it to be movable. And scalable and minimizable and give it, and it is gonna have a title. This is the title. Um, and this uh, is the bounds. Um, what we can see here as well is that we are allocating for this block um, an instance of um, this uh, C-type, so this rectangle, um, and we're populating it using the rect function. So here, um, this is taking these values, populating uh, this struct with those values, and then it returns a pointer to that struct, which is, oh, does it part of, return a pointer? Does it return the actual struct itself? Um, I guess whatever this wrapped item is in Lisp, that gets returned and gets passed off to nkbegin. So, that's good. And then uh, this will be um, zero if this failed. And inside here we start creating items inside uh, that frame. So this is, yeah, a row with a fixed size. Dy so static rows have a fixed size. Dynamic can be resized. Um, here's how you create a button. Um, and because it's immediate mode UI, uh, you get the response in line. So you, this equals zero is saying if this button is clicked, then um, output button pressed. We will just take everything from here. Da, 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 easy, ard, um, compression. Oh yeah, that's what that thing was for. Okay, context, background. So let's just get rid of this. Let's see if we can just dump that. What's kind of interesting is that we have end outside of the unless. I guess it has to be matched with an end even if it failed? Probably. Um, so let's do this. Okay, so that, that's freaking out by, okay, there's a few things here. App doesn't exist. We're going to change this to UI. Um, default output. Not going to worry about that. We're just going to format T. Um, that's going to be to do with, I guess, which thread we're on. And I've ignored chat for long enough, so I need to come back to you guys very soon. But we also need to do the last bit from the example, um, which is actually calling the renderer. But that is not as important as seeing what you people have to say. Cool. Um, I have a, I must admit, I haven't played with uh, Perenifer Qigong. But uh, if it's how Suska Jose is saying, then yeah, I wouldn't like it either. I, I like the kind of... The kind of minimal level of... Um, kind of in significant indentation that there is in Lisp in that the standard uh, indentation that seems to be used, I'm not sure if it was actually in the spec or not, um, gives me enough information when I'm scanning through things, but otherwise I like to be able to move things about a bit. Um, <laughs> Fondervimps writes, the entire program in a single line, so it doesn't worry about indentation. Like a real man. Um... Jason's saying, I use them like Perinfa for, um, Perinfa, Perinfa? Okay. Oh yeah, so we infer Peren, Perinfa for a while, but um, now I combine aggressive indent with some tricky on my Perens and tab keys to produce something much simpler. Oh, interesting. Um, 
Keegan says, I don't think uh, Perinfo would even touch the code that's on the screen. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, it's something I need to look into, I guess. I've been pretty happy with... I, again, I, I use such a basic setup. It's like, give me some slime and then just... Like, oh, a Predit obviously is mandatory. If, if whatever the thing is doesn't play with Predit, it's not going to get used. Anyway. So after these two things, um, we need to call the renderer. So we need to give it the uh, window size, and that's it. Oh, this is fucking great. Um, and then clear the context. Well, this is, yeah, beautiful. Ah, oh, borrow dusty rule. Let's have a look. Um, so to get the size of the window, what we want in list, in sorry, in Keppel is the current surface. Um, that's going to be um, backend dependent what this value actually is. So here it's a wrapped, um, I guess a wrapped pointer to um, an SDL window. Um, it could just be a pointer on its own. It really doesn't matter. Um, it's up to the individual host to implement the functions that take instances of whatever this is. So we can get surface um, dimensions. And that's the value we roughly want. So we'll take that. We'll go destructuring. Really just rely too much on the intelligence of my editor here. Uh, width and height. Okay. And that should be it. Other than, of course, we need to provide the NK context and NK renderer, which are in UI. So we can say. Um, with slots, um, not like that, UI, um, just put them in here for tidiness, there we go, okay, so that should be all we need to get some UI working, hopefully, if, if when I destroyed loads of stuff in here I didn't destroy something important, which we'll see because nuclear one thing nuclear does do is like if you get anything wrong it just crashes it crashes so hard um play with verts.lisp so let's oh i haven't even opened that file yet play with verts.lisp let's go down to game step dun, 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 dun. so we draw all the stuff um this is where we draw this scene with fxaa uh, then we've got some temporary debugging draw stuff so we're just going to call step ui in here and do that and holy shit that was very strange in that <laughs> everything the lion does appeared but now we have a window and the camera's freaked out um oh what the f what is going on well Oh, did I just crash? Nope, we're still here. This looks wrong. Oh yeah, we've got all kinds of things buggering up here. Now, we can, we can probably make a guess at what this is. GL state is probably fucked up. Um, let's have a look, let's comment this out. Oof. It is not a happy bunny. Yeah. So, I guess we need to find out what state was touched um, and reset that afterwards. Because we are in a weirdy state now, and that even without the UI running, we've got things all kind of a bit fucked up. And it could be, I mean. We're seeing things to do with depth here, or winding order, or all kinds of shit here. So let's go and I guess we I guess we just need to go and have a look at nuclear and see what state is touched. Um, what was that? Okay, nuclear state. GL, 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 GL. Okay, so I guess we should go find the documentation and go see what we can find out. 
Nice. Okay, so we've got a single page thing going on here. So hopefully, let's just do GL. Nope. GL. Okay, forget that. Oh, what could we, what could we say that it, what, what can we search for that might get us there? I mean, state is one thing. Um, yeah, this is talking about the state of the system itself. Um, Let's have a look. So the state is touched in the renderer. Renderer isn't documented in neither bodge nor nuclear. That's not a problem, dude. Um, what would it take to replace that? I suppose it's um, actually yeah. We could just look at. We should just look at it. We should just look at what we've got. And um, oh, I see. Yeah, of course. So nuclear itself isn't touching GL at all. Yeah, it's got no dependencies, has it? Man, I, I forget this stuff so fast. It's really bad. Um, Live main. Let's go and have a look at the renderer. We could see what we could do is just rewrite the renderer um, in Keppel, and then all the state's going to kind of behave anyway, so it might not be a big deal. So, let's go back to our UI file. And um, compose, no, it's in render nuclear, this guy. So, all it, this is is a call out to uh, bodge render, which is fine. So we should, should find that here somewhere. Bodge render, here we go. Okay, so not too bad here. We're setting some state for nuclear. Dun, 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 dun. We're enable blending, enabling blending. We're setting the blend equation. We're disassembling, disabling cull face. We're disabling the depth test. We're disabling the scissor test. Um, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So we're touching a whole bunch of state here, and then we reset some things. But of course, um, Keppel doesn't know about that either, so we need to let it know. Now, I did start looking at um, some things for defining a block um, which the state, th where the state needs to be reset, but it was kind of done, it was done in an afternoon and it was when Borodus was looking into maybe using Keppel for some of the bodge stuff. Um, so it hasn't been maintained. Um, but let's see what's in there anyway. Um, okay. Okay. Let's try this with context state restored. And we can wrap it around. Ah, let's just wrap it around this whole thing. Whoop. With context state restored, we're going to say, um, yep, program is true. Um, oh, God, now this is one of the pieces of like indenting and fucking lisp that really pisses me off. I don't understand uh, the keyword indenting stuff. All the others are going to be fine. Stancil, true, and all these will be okay. But this first one, fuck that. Anyway. Um, Let's bring up that C code again. So we're going to restore program. We're going to restore the buffer. 
So what have we got here? Gets buffer targets. Um, let's have a look at that. Buffer targets, how is that used? Buffer targets. Oh, idiot. Hmm. Uh, it's going to be a list, I guess, a list of targets. Um, okay. All right, let's see what it is. So it probably should be. Um, now, was it array buffer? Hey, there is a good crowd in tonight. Lovely to have you all here. Damn, that's lovely. Cool, right, what's going on? Um, DevX unit say, these pitfalls are why I avoid any C library that touches GL state. Barrett saying, uh, <laughs> he calls this strange language. Indeed. Um, yeah, it's possible to translate the C code into CL almost line by line, definitely could. Um, the time you spent on integration issues could help you with your own symbol, get your own symbol GUI written lisp. Guess so. Um, yeah, I, I really like the fact that the, the Baradus has provided a example renderer. I remember getting the nuclear stuff set up the first time around was an absolute bitch because every time you got something wrong, it's seg folded. And obviously like in lisp, then reloading the thing and then making a change and then having it seg fold again for fucking hours was Blah. Plus, it's a good try time to test this stuff out as well. So, um, whoops, wrong machine. Um, array buffer and element array buffer. Cool. Um, let's see if that's right. Yeah, I'm still curious about buffer targets for target and blah 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 um okay yeah that looks kind of cool so let's see what happens um what else oh yeah blending um do we have blending in this Stencil, FBO's bound, depth test function, depth mask, depth range, yada, yada, yada. Um, no, we don't have depth. Blah. Hmm. That's very annoying. Oh, no, depth test. Oh, no, depth test function. That's annoying. Okay. Right. Um, no blending stuff. Which is a bit of a pain. Huh. Oh yeah, I'd like to handle this, but I'm not sure how to handle it yet. Okay, so blending stuff. Hmm. Yeah, that's gonna be a bit of a pain actually. I can bodge it. I can just hack it for now. Um, that will work. But I really wanna try this out, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, Yeah, this needs to be expanded, to be honest. VAO, let's uh, set VAO to T because that's definitely touched. Um, what else? Scissor test. Is scissor in here? Scissor viewport indices? Ah, I'll have to look into that because that seems like a more general uh, concept than just scissoring being enabled or not. Um, scissor viewport indices. Right, let's just say um, index zero and just see how far we get with that. And then there's the blending problem still. Um, but what I think we're gonna end up doing is rewriting this renderer in uh, Keppel and then we'll just get away with it. But that's bad, that's not a good feature of Keppel to not be able to interrupt easily with these things. This is meant to help with that, um, but if it doesn't then Fuck me, I guess. Right. Oh, that'll teach me. 
Nice. Um, and let's go back to. Oops. Want to bring up the REPL. Want to bring up play with verts. Not that. I want to bring up the file play with verts. And I want to bring back this. And that has not helped yet, but that might just be because things were already broken. I'm kind of also disappointed that, um... Oh no, that's good. Like, the button is at least, um... It's highlighting? But click events aren't working. That's stupid. Why aren't click events working? That's got to be in how we handled the, um, the input. Let's see how long it's going to take me to get back to chat. A while. God damn it. Right. Um, input button. Yeah. Let's see if I'm just a, a fool. Let's get with play with list and let's just print anywhere. It really doesn't matter, Chris. Just put it somewhere. Print. Print this. Alright, so we got loads. And it's never not nil. So that's stupid. Um, how annoying. Oh, it's that button, that's why. Okay, so um, let's get rid of this. Get rid of all those prints. Come back over here and change zero to one, recompile. And now, um, yes, now we can move the window around. And I guess this will probably work as well. Yes, there's stuff happening here. Yeah, there is, there is scrubbing here, but we're also turning the camera at the same time. So we'll need to make sure that we're outside the window before we start rotating things. But that's that's fine. That's easy for us to do. Bam, bam, bam. Button pressed. Cool. So input's working too. Progress. Right. Uh, the scene is from, yes, sorry, it's already been mentioned in the chat, but DaveX unit asked what the scene was, and this is obviously the uh, sponsor scene from Crytek. This is what we've been working on for the last few weeks. I'm not sure, why am I saying obviously? It's not obvious. It's a mess. Look at it. Anyway, yes. Um, first time watching this stream in a long time. No worries, man. It's really good to have you back. It is a crowd in today. It's lovely. Um... Matian saying a bit of an issue that they stopped developing drivers for OS X. Um, oh, okay, yeah. That's the uh, that's that's not a lack of resources. That's fucking Apple being shit. They've been trying. They've been they've been shit with GL for years, never updating it. So it's like their version of GL is so far behind. Um, and it just allowed them. It's it's it kind of reminds me of the regulatory capture shit. It's that when someone does like takes a job and then does it terribly, then says, "Look at the mess of all this stuff. We should replace it with our thing." Um, yeah, that's how it feels with all the OSXGL stuff. I mean, I'm not saying that GL is the best API in the world. It's really not, and uh, it's really good that we've got Vulkan. But yeah, Apple are just trying to control everything soup to nuts. It's but I'm really glad to see that there are um, what are going to be compatibility libraries to allow Vulkan stuff to work on top of Metal. So we don't have to deal with yet one more fucking platform. Um, yeah. Bah. Bitter. Anyway, it's, it'll still work for a while because they've been ignoring that fucking thing for years. And it's still been there. So hopefully... Um, Hopefully it'll hold out for a bit longer. Um, Dave X Unit saying, I've never heard of the sponsor scene. Not a problem, man. Yeah, it's just one of those scenes that comes up a lot in, uh, or at least did um, for a while in um, rendering papers. It was just a, a suitably complex scene that, we, that was used for a lot of lighting experiments and stuff. What are you going on about now? Um... Oh, of course, yeah. Um, that's because we don't initialize the UI when we initialize everything else. So play with verts.lisp, and then we really should, for the sake of Metian, we should uh, commit this and push it. Because we almost have something that does something. D 
Dun, 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 dun. Any plans to use Vulcan with Keppel? No. Um, Vulcan is a great uh, API. Like it's it, well, it's a it's a really good thing, but um, its advantages really stem when you're uh, like CPU or like driver um, bound. Like that that's where your bottleneck is. Then Vulcan can help you a lot. It really helps to know what you're building before you send to Vulcan because it takes a lot of code to do basic stuff but you do have complete control it's that trade-off like they give you as much control as they reasonably can um but yeah it, it's it's complicated to use and so it doesn't make it very scripting friendly and oh what's going on here that's not great what the fuck Okay. What was that? Just to add some fun to the stream, we've got an error that we've never heard of. Let's just pretend that didn't happen and see how far we get. But yeah, it's... um. Yeah, I'm not even vaguely touching the limits of GL yet. I mean, in the kind of toy things we've done. There's, there's so much, obviously, you can get out of it. Um... But it does have a lot of problems and a lot of things, uh, its inefficiencies stem from um, the API. It's just not a great API. <sighs> but yes, creating something, I don't, I don't know how to make um, Vulcan pleasant to work with um, in the way we have done with Cat with uh, GL. It's a, it's a, it's going around my head because it's just like a, I want to keep doing stuff. Yeah, we're getting this same situation again. Look at that. Huh. Well, that's a bunch of ass. A whole bunch of ass. Oh, wait a second. Are we behind the curtain again? No, we're not. No. It's just stalled. Okay, I think it aborted. Nope. Yep, there we are again. Oh. Post signal tramp. Ah, oh, what have I done wrong? Strange business. Okay. Um, let's let's get back to play with that, and let's remove the UI stuff from um, the main loop, and let's see if we can get things working again, and then we can introduce this back a piece at a time because. Something is funky. Um, Suska House is using Vulcan on Mac. That's great to hear. Imagine the overhead is probably pretty similar to DXVK, which is a DX11 driver implemented in Vulkan. Has very little overhead to the point where it's seen better performance in some games in Wine. Jesus Christ, than in Windows. That is really nice to hear, man. I, I mad respect for all the people working on the Wine project and and, and uh, Reactos and stuff like that. Those people rock. God damn. Let's see if we can get a little further this time. I mean, I understand this would chug for a bit uh, while it loads the asset. There we go. Okay, okay. So let's let's do this, and then let's just bring up Inferior just in case, and let's uncomment UI. 
and now it doesn't work. What the shit is going on? How strange. In it UI. So yeah, it created it. It set this stuff up, which we tested before. So why is it freaking out? I guess it's some of the some of the weird shit I'm doing with the unbinding. I don't know. I think we're just gonna have to recreate the renderer in, in Keppel and, and just make do with that. Which is a bit of a shame because like I say, I don't want Keppel to be some kind of silo where you have to do things inside of Keppel or it's not gonna work. It should play nice with other GL libraries. But clearly it doesn't right now. So that's a bummer. Hmm. Oh well. So this is the bit where we have a problem. Oop. I suppose what we can just do is make a function called render, which takes these things, and we'll start from there. Because it's going to clash with something else for sure. Okay, fine. Let's go and have a look at that C code again. And we will just start going through and porting this. Okay, so the first thing is actually we're not going to need this renderer anymore. So the make renderer up here, make... Oh, come on, where is it? Bodge renderer. Create. We need to port this first. Um, oh, that's a point borrowed us. Yeah, maybe the size of the window is the issue. Um, yeah, we can test that quickly, actually. Let's just lie to it. <laughs> that's what we need, lies. More lies. Um, Let's just say that it's 600 by 600 and we let it go and see what happens. So, as before, we're just going to nuke it, restart, blah, blah, blah. Bring it in, just in case. Many aren't saying it's pretty nice to just connect to the chat via RC. Oh, I love that, man. Yep. Cisco is just saying it still surprised me so, um, to learn that people use RC. It was one of those things I started using really late. I had no reason to use it as um, as a kid at all. Um, I didn't know anyone who was using it. And then, yeah, it was only later on. Actually, for stuff like, yeah, for stuff like Lisp and other dev, dev stuff, it was... Uh, that was what dragged me into it. Chug, chug, chug. Let's see where we get to. Oh, there we go. Oh, fucking idiot. Of course this bit's working. Um, oh no, wait a second. It's, is it to do when, when we initialize stuff? No. Okay, so the um, borrow dust, the width and height stuff, because they're not set um, on in it where they might be wrong, um, I'm pretty sure they're set correctly. So let's just reset FBOs, for example. Otherwise, that wouldn't work. 
So if I now go to play with verts and say step UI, I expect that we're now jammed like we were before. It, it's it's to do with the state. It's it's got to be. That's I mean that's the thing we changed and then things started fucking up. So I'm pretty sure that's what it'll be. Um, Someone doing some scheme game dev? That'd be cool. DaveX unit. I'm wanting to use some. Um, oh, of course, DaveX unit. Yeah. Wanting to stream some scheme game dev inspired by Cushion Pixel. Man, that'd be great. Do it. I want to watch that. Are you still working on. Oh, what was it called? It had the most adorable logo um, of the little burb. God damn it. What was it called? Um, but most of the time I'm on the trade when I could. So, yeah, that's a bugger. Yeah, you're right, Bart. It does look like that, but it's strange. Um, whoa. I can't keep up with you guys now. Um, Davex unit, is there a canonical source for the sponsor scene? Use the one that comes out of... Um, that comes from Crytek. Um, however, you can get hold of that. And then, um, then you need to fix up a few things once you've got it. Uh, there is another... Oh, I found the GLTF version. Nice. As soon as we get the new um, bindings... Uh, for Asim, then we'll be able to use that, which would be great. Um, Barrett's saying, looks like some magic going on with Enox there, different font size in each pane. Yeah, you can do that anytime. Um, you just, you can change the size of everything independently, uh, but it'll just, there is a default size for when you start a frame. Um, it'll have that size and then you can adjust it from there. Um, Chickadee, yes, that was what it was called. It's the an adorable name. You're still working on it. Fucking great. And there is a link that people should check out in the uh, in the notes there. Chickadee's cool. Actually, I'm gonna bring it up just because it's got the cute logo. Uh, whoop. Look at it. It's so pretty. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. Check that stuff out. Lots of good, lots of good ideas have gone into this. A lot of experience over time. Um, not ashamed to say I've taken some inspiration from different things Dave's been doing. Very cool. Um, okay, so yeah, we are. Let's just let's just bite the bullet and. Um, and restart this yet again. And uh, as you can see now, imagine doing this while setting up nuclear. Oh god, it was just such a pain when getting the first bindings done. Woo. Okay, so where were we? Render UI. And actually, shit, we took out. Oh, now I'm confused. Oh fuck, I feel like I didn't save it after. Oh, go away. I feel like I might not have saved it when we did the last test. Ah, oh, goddammit, so we need to try that again. Um, no, but still, um, this would have been initialized. Uh, so that wasn't, that wasn't the thing. Okay, now I'm okay with it. Right, let's bring up our C code again, and we need to port some stuff. So first thing we're gonna do is port this shader code over. So we're gonna need a little pipeline for doing the rendering. Defun G, and it's the UI vert, which takes a, um, a position, a text chord, and a color. Um, that's cool. So, how will that be? So we can define a little struct for that. Um, def struct g um, ui vert has um, pos, um, which is a vec2, um, uv, which is a vec2, and come on, Chris. Color, which is a vec4. And that's all we need to think about that for now. So let's go here. 
say avert is a UI avert. Also takes some uniforms. Yep, uniform. Um, there's a project, a projection matrix, a project matrix. Good God, man. Map four. Okay, so we've got that. And then all that happens inside here is that we're passing, this is the outputs, so frag UV and frag color, we set those from the context of the um, of the vertex. And we set the GL position to be something as well. Okay, so all we need to do here is we say values. Um, we have the, I'm gonna say times the projection matrix with uh, position x, y. Position is a vec2, so you don't really need to squizzle in that way. Um, so we can say with slots um, cross uv and color from vert. So we can say position like this, 0, 1, and that's that. And then for the next line, um, we're just going to pass through the uv and the color. So uh, UV and color. That's that. Um, UI frag. It's going to obviously take those two values that will pass through. So there's UV, which is a VEC2. Um, color, which is a VEC4. And there seems to be um, a uniform. which is the sampler. So we call it text. Um, it's a sampler 2D. Da, 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 da. And then we just have the out color, which is the frag color, which is passed through, which is color times whatever comes out of the texture. So we call it texture, which is which samples things, uh, passing in text passing in UV. And that should be it. That should be our uh, our stages for our little pipeline. So we do def pipeline G, UI pipeline. Um, and we're going to take UI vert. Oh, okay. Is it going to be okay with the... Yeah, it should be fine. Types and GPU functions should be able to be named the same thing without problem. Hope I haven't fucked that up. That would be rather embarrassing. Um, UI vert and UI frag. And this one takes a vec2 and a vec4, which is neither of these <laughs> are written correctly. Okay, so that's our pipeline set up. So that's that bit done. Um, there is some kind of renderer object here. But that's just to store this state, so we might not need it. Um, but it does store um, a max vertex buffer and a max element buffer, which are just passed in, which are just constants, though. We saw them before, I think. When they the ones passed in? No, wait, I'm confused. Oh no, this is when we set up the renderer. Okay, so let's have a look up here. Um, make renderer has yeah max vertex buffer size and max element buffer size. Cool. I guess we'll use those for now, and it's so they get a little confusing how they're used. Renderer creates they're passed in. And then they seem to just be stored on the um, renderer object. And then they're used later. Um... Okay, yeah, they're used later in Bodge Render itself. Okay. Hmm. So I think, seeing as they're just two constant numbers, I think we can probably just store them on the UI object. Can we get away with that, probably? Um, yeah, let's let's leave them here for now, and we can we can come back to those guys later.
And then we NK buffer init default. Ah, now this is where things are going to get interesting. So dev commands. What is... Okay. So the nuclear um, thing here, we need to pass in a reference to whatever commands is. Okay, so it's an NK buffer. Ah, yes. So we're going to need something to store all this information. So we are going to need... I guess we can just make a struct for that as well. Um, is there anything else we need to think about in here? Don't know. We'll see you later. Def struct G. I'm just going to be lazy and do it um, with a def struct G rather than doing the CFFI code. It should make it easier for me. We'll see. Actually, will it? Hmm. Might require some fuckery. Actually, no. We'll, we'll, so we can make an, a C array of one of these things. And then we can just get pointers to... We can get a pointer to the object itself. But then how do we get pointers to the slots? I'm not sure if Kepler provides a nice way of doing that. Which is kind of stupid. Um, let's have a look. So UI vert, when that expands... Um, we've got all these helpers for getting the various slots, like setting and getting from the slots. But we don't have something for returning the pointer to the slots, which is kind of annoying. Because that seems like a useful thing to have. So I guess we're actually going to have to do this with, um, with CFFI after all, which is fine. Maybe it doesn't make sense for us to try and... Um, yeah, actually... No, using a um, a Keppel struct might be a bad idea anyway, because, yeah, what was the reasoning behind that? Because those things are meant to be uh, structs that are going to work on the CPU and the GPU, and a lot of these types are CPU only. I mean, they're specific C types, so we don't want to fuck around with that. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's hack from here. Let's see what you guys are up to, because I'm a little behind. Um... Um, one of these days I'll write a, a scheme version of Varia one of these days yeah man like a total rewrite of that would be cool I'm actually looking at um, type system stuff at the moment which is uh, for another another project which is yeah hopefully compiling to um the SIMD code stuff later on, and to GPU code. We'll, I'll probably use Vario for that, to, that for the GPU side to start with. But oh man, it's fun to be getting a bit more of an idea of how some of these type system, real type systems work, which is cool. Um, Chase is saying stream is fading in and out for me right now. Oh, probably because you're on the move. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah, sorry about that, man. Cisco Jose saying that um, I have to demo my project that I've been working on for the last four months. A big C game engine with a Lua scripting engine and data oriented design. Nice, man. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, lots of buzzwords. With an e ECS architecture. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Dave X unit. If, if it's not... Um, oh, man. If it's on a Tuesday, I'm not going to be able to watch live, though, because that's the evening I go out and actually hang with the old people that worked at Fuse. But, hey, Johnny, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm glad to hear Keppel's been a bit of an inspiration for some of the... the, um... chickadee stuff. God, how did the name leave that fast? Lots of discussion on different languages to to use for fucking around with games in. Yeah, Rust does look cool. That would be good stuff. 
Um, nice. Right. Where were we? Okay, so we need to define a struct. So CFFI def struct. Um, have I forgotten how to do this? Looks like I have. Def C struct, that was it. Name and options is going to be, let's just, yeah, let's just call it, a, let's just do our own LNK renderer. Um, Rather than bodged renderer, we can call it bodged renderer. Yay! Um, and it's going to take. So this one's actually taking the struct itself. I don't think we'll do that. I think we'll take a pointer to the struct. Um, have an NK buffer. Oh man, this is going to take a. Sorry, I'm just looking at this like this is going to take a while. Um, whatever. Let's have a look. Buffer. I might have to hack us some of this. Um, off stream. We'll see. Ah. NK. So draw null texture. Give me a pointer. What am I doing? Um, Font Atlas. Ah, oh, man, this brings back bad memories of having to do this the first time around. Uh, VBO, VO, EBO. I don't think we need any of these because we are going to let Keppel handle most of this stuff. Um, yes, hopefully we won't need any of this. In fact, we probably don't even need to store this in a... Yeah, we don't need to do this in a C struct at all. What am I talking about? Let's just make a... Um, Let's make a class for this. I thought we were going to have to pass this into other code, but I don't think we do. Uh, so buffer, draw null texture, font atlas. Right, where are we next? Oh, there's just a, there's a lot to reproduce. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so yes, of course, there is something we do need to pass in, and that's the commands buffer. So we do need to make a. Um... Where was the init? Oh, just... Sketch out some code here. CFFI uh, with foreign object. Will we want to do it like that? Probably not, because with foreign object is going to free the object at the end of the block. So we're going to have to say let. Um buffer or cmd buffer probably be um, cffi foreign alloc and we're going to be allocating something of some type um, it's going to be a struct of and then we really need to know what that type is and this is where some of this stuff gets a little fiddly because yeah i, d I don't think we're going to get anything working tonight unfortunately Huh, what could we do in the last 15 minutes actually will be satisfying. Well, I'd like to actually, I'll change that. We're definitely not going to get uh, something working tonight. Because this is one of the things like when everything's wrapped up in a macro like this, you have to go and expand the macro to try and find what the names of everything are, um, is and what the signatures are. Um, and I need the C file open because otherwise I can't remember what I'm doing. Okay, NK buffer. Okay, so it's just a nuclear buffer. But that's the thing, can we define one of these just with, um, just with CFFI? Or are we gonna run into trouble because this was done with claw? Oh yeah, idiot. Yep, it doesn't know about that struct. Oh, good. Oh, please say there's another definition somewhere. Um, 
these take these buffers. Oh, am I going to have to use... Right, so yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this tonight because I really need to learn how to use uh, claw. Because it doesn't seem like these types are defined in CFFI. And so basically what I'm used to using... Um, yeah, Borodust is just let me know in the chat. So yeah, it won't work. You would need claw facilities. Right, so... No. <laughs> we will not be doing that tonight. Um, just because I'm... It's going to... It's not going to get done in the next... 13 minutes. And yeah, that's something I really need to pay a lot of attention to. So, hmm, what to do? What to do? <laughs> 13 minutes is doable. No. The claw. Yeah, if, I'm, if I just believe enough. Susuke Jose saying instancing with index buffers. Okay. Oh, why am I loading that? That's not what I want to load. Fuck you. Devil dot examples. Works. Kevl dot examples examples. Instancing. Oh yeah, we're back at this game again. Right, so, um, whoops. Uh, class imp, fallback libs, yes. Load examples. Come on, where are we? Works, kevl dot examples, examples, blah, right. And then we had instance arrays. So yeah, that's what this code was doing. Um, Kepl dot examples, Kepl REPL. Let's load this. Run loop. Okay, so. Um, I just finished the streams of the Voronoi diagrams and instance works, but not with index buffers. Yes, that was, um, that was fixed. So, um, yeah, we, we had a... I can't remember which bug we had that time. Um, yeah, I can't remember if that was... Uh, can you remind me of which stuff... Yeah, what, what was breaking there? Because, like, how it works now is... Um, yeah, instanced arrays rather than index arrays. Not with index buffers. That's strange. Because when we make a GPU stream, um, like the the indexes into the array, uh, into the vertex array, um, should have been working. I was getting zeroed out information in the instance specific information. Okay. But if you had, if you had no index buffer, it worked fine. Exact. Oh, the exact example here. So we're saying that if we have. Oh, that's rather worrying. Let's see if we can uh, bodge something together quickly then. Let's see if we've got something in here that uses. Uh, prep. No. Um, prep index. Yeah. Sure. Um, Index, oh, that's worrying actually. If instancing doesn't work with indexes? Actually, but this one does. Here we have, um, stop loop, let's compile this one, and package. Whoops. All oh, right, we're not in the right directory. So slime set default directory to works capital do examples examples. Hopefully that should do it. Okay, so now we've got a load of load of instance birds here. 
uh, with some very strange order, probably depth problems. Um, and they're definitely using instancing. Um, with instances, oh, God damn it, Chris. With instances, a thousand of them. Um, and the G stream was for this guy, apparently. Which is from loading this asset using this. And the buffer stream does have an index array. So that should be working. So this guy is saying. Um, in that stream, you had an index buffer along with the per index per instance data. If you had an index buffer along with the per instance data, the per instance data would be zeroed. So the location was always zero, 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 and the color was black, even though you had a valid data in the GPU arrays for the per instance data. Totally has an instance array. So apparently that works now. Okay, cool. Um, that's interesting. So yeah, but here we're just using instancing. We're not using um per instance data so i wonder if we could do that what have we got a few minutes let's have a look um so yeah that's uh where do we set the positions for these things i assume it's in the in here let's have a look um, Texel fetch offsets GL instance ID. Okay, so then so we made a bunch of offsets into a texture a position sampler. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so we could say, um, whoops, really? We don't need that right now. Wow, we're having uh, we're having some laggy shit going on here. Just what we need. Um, sampler texture. So we got texture buffer. Come on, man. What is going on? It, you just know on a stream you'll get every possible weird bug. Anyway, um, let's just check. We've got nothing weird going on down there. Anyway. Um, yeah, we've got a texture buffer. What should we do with this? Let's just pull G that. Okay, it's a load of vector fours. So we're gonna make, um, actually, ah, sampler texture. Um, texture buffer, is it, what's the um, a buffer texture? Maybe there's something there. Yeah, that is a buffer texture. How do I get the, GPU, oh, of course, it's the GPU array. God damn it, it's just um, text wrap. I'm forgetting my own API. Okay, so there we go. So, yeah, where do we actually populate this? We should just find the code that set this up and make another one. So, come on. Position texture. Make texture, dimensions 1000, blah, blah, blah. What the hell? Okay, yeah, it's just this. Fair enough. Um, def parameter per inst. Um, give me nil. And we should just do setup per inst is make GPU array. Take this nonsense. Um, and it's element type vec4. Um, and it's don't have to set the dimensions because it'll be able to work them out. And do, oops, do this. Yeah, cool. Um, and then we need to set, I've got to remember how to, how it actually works in here. Um, we just make a GPU array, 
of some data with a certain dimensions and then we just use it down here when we're making the vertex stream. Okay, so let's stop the loop and um, go back to instancing. We'll have this per inst thing. Um, and then it's buffer stream, make buffer stream. Here it is. Um, should be able to do list. Cons one, okay. I think that's right. So that's gonna say it's one iteration per instance um, taken from this GPU array. And the index array is there, let's do that. And then down in our code down here, instead of dealing with offsets, we'll just ignore that. In fact, we just won't use it. Whereas Texel fetch offsets, no. We'll comment that out and instead we'll just do um, actually all of this becomes this just becomes progon. Comment this out because the value is now going to be passed in here. Sorry I'm ignoring the chat for a bit. I will be back. TPOS VEC4. Um, Yeah, that looks looks like it could be valid. Um, run loop. Let's just make sure that it's going to definitely reinitialize this again. Yeah, it's going to call in it. Fine. Um, oh, nice. It seems to be working, but it's hard to tell. So let's let's go and change the shader code. It should be fine. Um, if we change this to a let tpos be tpos, get rid of this nonsense. That's fine. Everything's still working. If we change this to zero. Oops, yep, that's not a back four. Oh, then it's still working, so that's wrong. What the hell? What the fuck have I done wrong here? Ah, we're almost out of time. Did start a little late, so I'm just gonna run a little over. What the hell? Okay, so with instances, we're calling instance birds. Oh, that's why we're still using the original vertex function. So this should now be taking a vec4 um, and there's our one. Um, and hopefully there's the rest. Okay. Bam. So it looks like um, instance arrays with index arrays now does work correctly. Um, so now offsets, wherever that's used, can be removed. And nothing breaks. Offsets can be removed from the shader, which is cool. And um, I guess anything that was that was related to. So that was um, post sampler. Um, gets removed and thus post text. I don't think that was used for anything else. Gets removed. Stop loop, run loop, yep, that's it. Okay, so thank you Cisco, so that allowed us to get us something uh, working at the end of the stream. Um, <laughs> hold on, we already talked about a fucking bell. I know, but I wanted to get something working. Uh, <laughs> random penguin colors, please, flocking behavior. We've done flocking. I did bad flocking on another episode with murmurations. <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on. Um, okay, so winding back, I'll, I'll address a couple of things. Um, 
Cisco Jose uh, asked if we were doing the positions based on a, a uh, per instance data, which was no, we were using that texture, which he also commented and saw. Um, Careful hyperspec time. I've got pretty extensive documentation, dude. <laughs> it's not quite the hyperspec, but uh, as far as reference documentation goes, it is, it's pretty long. <laughs> Jace, but then Keppel would need a spec. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm not there. I've still got a few things to uh, to wrap up. <laughs> Fiano is telling me time's up. You were two minutes early. That was 9.58. Give me a chance, man. I was one minute over. Well, now I'm two minutes over, but fuck it. I gotta, I gotta see what you folks are saying. I'm, this is the bit I love. So yeah, sorry we didn't get more done on the UI side. Um, I'll look at the renderer and... Man, I, it's kind of weird. I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have in the next week. Because when I've had time on the weekends, I kind of want to be working on Keppel or, say, related other compilery type stuff. So I will see. But um, but yeah. Susco so Jose, we now have uh, the instancing thing. So thanks for bringing that up. Uh, it was uh, If that was wrong, we definitely needed to know about it. So... Unless there's any more for any more, I'm going to call it a night. Thank you all so much for uh, for tuning in. Um, we'll try and... I'll, I'll think about whether we'll do more nuclear stuff next week. I would really like to. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to... I kind of need to do some prep work um, if we're going to get into rewriting the renderer. Just because I need to learn Claw a bit and stuff like this to make it even vaguely watchable. Otherwise, it's just... Like uh, Barrett was saying, murmurations will be the entire entire stream. Um, that's great. Thanks so much, folks. I will... Um... I'll catch you later. Peace.